What's going on, guys? How's it going? I know I haven't made a video for this week in Tigers baseball in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's how it's probably going to be from now on. You know, the days of me covering every single game and talking about every single series is pretty much dead. You know, I no longer have the time to do that anymore, you know, uh, to dissect every single game, every single play, every single inning like I used to on here. So pretty much from here on out, you know, I'm going to do start doing this week in Tigers baseball every couple of weeks, I think. Uh, do baseball banter once a week still with Mike Hewitt because uh, that's I like that show. I like doing it. It's a good thing to talk about general baseball, which we'll probably do tomorrow after tomorrow night, I should say. But the days of talking about every single series, every single game is going to be over with. I'm just going to start making these videos every two weeks, maybe a week and a half. And talk about basically what's been going on with the Tigers, you know, stuff I want to rant about and everything else. So... Finally, the Tigers have made a trade to get a bullpen arm. Jesus fucking Christ, it's about time. I can't tell you just how nerve-wracking it's been to watch this team, you know, with the way how bad their bullpen's been. It's been absolutely brutal. You know, I came on here in February. I came on here in January, in December, you know, did all that Tigers preview bullshit that I did. And I kept saying the one consistent thing, even watched my videos from earlier this year. This bullpen is the biggest Achilles heel. And I thought Dave Dombrowski did not do enough in the offseason. You know, he relied too much on, you know, Bruce Redome is going to be healthy all year and be able to pitch 60, 70 innings. You know, Albuquerque was going to be consistent. You know, Albuquerque, he hasn't been super, super awful this year, but he hasn't been great. You know, they're like, okay, we trade Doug Fisher, we're going to have Ian Kroll, and hopefully Phil Koch has a bounce back year. You know, so... And I just thought they were relying too heavily on certain arms and hoping that certain guys were going to do certain things. You know, season starts, Bruce Rendon goes down with Tyron John surgery. Uh, you know, so he was gone for the year. And then Ian Kroll, you know, he starts out good, but, you know, he gets destroyed by righties and he can't get on anyone. You know, he hasn't been that good since he got injured and it's just one of the DL. You know, Phil Coke has had a little bit of flashes of, flashes of brilliance. But, you know, he's Phil Coke. He's not good at all. And then Joe Nathan's been so bad all year. Really, we've only had one reliever in the bullpen that's done anything. And all these guys, I was thinking about this yesterday. How many relievers the Tigers have gone through to try to find a consistent batch of guys that they could go with in-house to try to solve this problem? And the guys I could think of was Pat McCoy, Chad Smith, Blaine Hardy, Corey, Blaine Hardy, Corey Kniebel, Jose Ortega, I think. Or no, I don't think Jose Ortega's pitched. I think he's pitched one inning. Yeah, it was against the Minnesota Twins. Jose Ortega, Justin Miller, Phil Coke, Joe Nathan, Java Chamberlain, Evan Reed. Let me check out. Robbie Ray was also on there too because now I'm actually looking at right now all the players that pitched in the bullpen. So I was pretty close. I only missed Robbie Ray. He also pitched a couple innings out of the bullpen before he got set back down after making a couple of starts with Anibal Sanchez's uh, little injury spell he had there for a minute. So I mean, they've gone through a lot of relievers. I mean, all these young kids, you know, they're hoping Knievel will come up. You know, he was absolutely dominating in the minors. He came up, he really didn't do that well. You know, uh, Chad Smith was more of a mop-up guy. I really like what they got in Blaine Hardy. You know, Ian Kroll, you know, he was getting, he was showing a little bit of brilliance there, but, you know, he's can't get out righties, and the guys have been hitting him with good power this year. I think he had like seven home runs in his first 14 innings pitch this year. So, I mean, he, he's just not effective. And then, you know, McCoy didn't pitch too much. You know, Evan Reed, he was really good for his first 12 innings, and he became a sex rapist, and uh, he, he's gone. He's not pitching for anyone right now. Uh, he's actually going to be catching in jail <laughs> if uh, he keeps that up. So, they it was they had to go out and do something. They literally had no choice. And I really, really like this Joaquin Soria move. But before I talk about that, I did want to make the point that I was reading something on Bless You Boys and a couple of tweets I saw that if Dave Dombrowski goes out in the offseason and fix the bullpen like how he should, because it's not like this was like some minor issue that he wasn't gonna hope it was come up. Over the last two postseason appearance playoff postseasons, that has been the Tigers' biggest Achilles heel, has been their bullpen. So it's not been like something that's been a minor issue or you know, for a short time. It's been for a few seasons. So if he went out and fixed it then, he wouldn't have had to pay the price to get Soria. Now, the relief market wasn't that big. You know, for the really good relievers, it was pretty much Papelbon, it was Street, it was Joaquin Benoit, Joaquin Soria, you know, Ant uh, Bestardo's out there, Mike Dunn's out there, uh, you know, c -Sheck is out there. But for to get guys that the Tigers really, really need was going to cost them some money or uh, some, some prospects. And Joaquin Soria this year has been absolutely outstanding. He's got an ERA of 270. He's got a strikeout to walk ratio of 10.5. So he's only walked, I think, like, He's walked four guys in 
33 and a third innings this year. His command has been impeccable. And I've always liked Joaquin Soria. You know, I remember the days of watching him with the Royals, you know, the Mexicutioner, as they would call him. I mean, he was absolutely outstanding. And then he had Tommy John surgery. And then when he actually came back from Tommy John surgery, I wanted the Tigers to go out and sign him like the Rangers did, just take a flyer on him. And the Rangers did. And his first year back from Tommy John, you know, he had 26 games last year. He had a 380 ERA. And then this year, you know, after Nathan left, and, you know, Perez has been hurt. Uh, Natalie or for Feliz has been hurt. You know, uh, Soria took over that role of closer, and he's done a great job. So what I'm really happy about is, is you get a guy in Soria. He's not. He's he's not. For some reason, they're they're sticking with Joe Nathan, and I like this too because Joe Nathan now he came out and struck out the side last night in the Tiger six to four win. Joe Nathan now has he has to pitch well. It's not like before when Nathan was struggling, you know, they tried the Jabba Chamberlain experiment in the ninth inning, and then he gives up a three-run homer to David Ortiz, and that pretty much quieted that down. You know, hey, let's not screw with him. Let's leave him in the eighth. Now there's like a guy who goes, all right, Nathan, you know, we, we sat with you long enough. We waited for you to, pit, you know, come through your struggles. You know, you complained about dead arm earlier this year. Now they have a guy in Soria to where if he continues to struggle, they can kick him out of the ninth inning role because you have a guy that's already not 17 saves this year and has an ERA of under three, and he's walk, he's striking out 10 hitters to every one walk he gives up. It's that good so far. So, you know, I like that. It's a great fail-safe to have in Soria. Um, the price they paid was pretty steep, but, I mean, like I said, the relief market was not that – wasn't that many – teams selling their really good pitchers, uh, and especially if you wanted someone that was cost-effective because Soria was making $5.5 million this year, plus he has a team option for 75 for next year. You know, if you would have got Benoit, he he's owed quite a bit of change next year, and then Papelbon has a nice big contract, so you'd be taking over that. And, you know, Papelbon would want to be closer straight out of the gate. You know, Soria's going to come over here fill the seventh inning spot. And I really like the, the addition of Soria as well because – you know, the other night, like against Arizona, where Java Chamberlain wasn't available and the Tigers' bullpen got lit up because Al Albuquerque can't throw a strike sometimes and Phil Coke can't throw a strike ever. You know, and then Ian Kroll comes out and gives up a, a, a freaking two-run hit and then the Diamondbacks steal a game from us. You know, that's not going to happen anymore because, you know, Chamberlain needs a night off or, or Nathan, you know, hopefully gets his shit straightened out, but, you know, he's not available. Boom, you slot, you know, Soria in that role or in the closer's role, and he's a great stopgap, a great filler. And he's a great failsafe, so I like it. You know, the price they paid, they had to pay Justin Thompson, who was their second, their first selection in the 2012 draft, but he was a second-round pick because they didn't have a first-round pick that year. Uh, and then, no, wait, 2013, my mistake. Uh, Kniebel was a first, uh, uh, I think, a first-round selection in 2012. Or I, got, I might got that mixed up. I think Kniebel was a first-round pick last year is what it was. And then Thompson was a, a second-round pick in 2012 is what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. And Thompson was actually rising through the ranks of uh, – the Tigers farm system pretty quickly there. Him and uh, Jonathan Crawford are two of the better were the better pitchers in the Tigers farm system. And I asked a guy who actually writes for Baseball Prospectus, and he's really really smart. I follow him on Twitter. His name's Josh Gord. Uh, he actually runs Tigers Prospects. And wh whatever this guy says about Tigers Prospects, I believe his word is God with me. He knows what he's talking about. He writes on Baseball Prospectus. He's a you know he's he's pretty much a scout. He scouts the Tiger system. This guy knows the system in and out. And he said that you know I asked him with. Thompson leaving, because, you know, Knievel I wasn't too mad about leaving. I know what he had. I watched him pitch in the Arizona Fall League last year. You know, he's kind of got a funky delivery that I wasn't too thrilled with, you know, because it's hard to repeat your mechanics. You know, he threw, throws really hard, mid-90s, and he's got an absolutely plus-plus curveball. It's wipe out stuff. But, you know, he's definitely a back end of the type of uh, – back end of the – pen type reliever but his command was just so awful and you know that was my biggest fear with him you know repeating his delivery and being effective and that was you know like I said he was dominating the minors this year but he was having a hard time throwing strikes in the big leagues in his, in his, in his what under seven innings he pitched with us small sample size yeah he didn't look in that impressive I mean, he showed flashes of brilliance with his curveball you know he, he showed good fastball a good fastball but it is what it is Justin Thompson I haven't actually saw a pitch but he's, from what I've read and what Josh told me about, he's could be a mid to back end rotation guy. Has a two seam fastball, has a good fastball, you know, good curveball. You know, none of his pitches are two plus plus, but he has a plus fastball, good two seamer. Relies on, you know, he can get the ground balls and strikeouts uh, pretty, pretty consistently. He's not a front end of the type arm, but you know, Jonathan Crawford. I guess I like I said, I asked him, you know. It, how does that affect the system, you know, even though we still got Jonathan Crawford? And I guess Thompson is a lot better pitcher than Crawford slates out to be. So it is a bit of a blow. So 
and the, the, the Tigers had to give up two of their top five prospects to get Soria. But there is a silver lining, like I said, if the Tigers want to bring back Soria for next year, if he does a good job, it's only going to cost them $7.5 so it is a cost-effective option. You know, And another reason why I like this Soria move is it helps you build your bullpen towards next year already because you bring, say, hopefully they bring back Jabba. You know, I can't believe I'm saying that, but Jabba's been very, very good this year. He's been the best bullpen we have. You bring back Jabba, you have Soria, you know, and then you got Nathan. Hopefully, you know, he can straighten his shit out. So you have a nice little core of right-handers. You know, even Albuquerque slating him in, in, in the back end of that, you know, uh, using certain rules. Because like I said, Albuquerque, what's Albuquerque's numbers this year? I know he's got like a mid-three year. He's got – I know he is, his command has been a lot better this year. I mean, in 48 games, he's got a 3.31 ERA. You know, he's striking out 10.2 uh, hitters per nine. He's only he's walking one point. Uh, he's only walking 2.8 hitters per nine. So he's really, really Albuquerque has done a nice job, and he's made a lot of appearances. He's pitched a lot of innings. His command's been a lot better. The slider's not as good as it used to be. I think when he first came up, the slider was a bit better than he used to throw. I think that's just me. Uh, but you you can't you can't you know say too much stuff. So you look really with the you know hopefully. Soria does well, and, and Dombrowski brings it back. You know, he brings back Jabba. So you look at now Nathan, Jabba, Soriano, Albuquerque. That's four really nice right-handers to have in your bullpen. You know, unlike this year where, you know, the, the ground they were laying was pretty shaky. You know, Jabba, what are you getting? You know, he wasn't effective with the Yankees whatsoever. Second year off Tommy John. You know, Nathan, you know, I thought of him as a push with Benoit, and really he was a loss compared to what Benoit has done you know, in San Diego. And then you look at, you know, you didn't know what you're going to get. Albuquerque, you know, and then your couple, you, you have Evan Reed in there in the back of that as well. And then, you know, you're taking a chance on Ian Kroll and Phil Coke. So really, there was no really solid foundation, no validity to even start with. And that was my biggest thing. Now, like I said, you look at next year's bullpen, you know, Soriano, or Soria, excuse me, Soria, hopefully Jabba, Nathan, Albuquerque, that's a nice four. Now, I do think, though, that the price the Tigers paid was worth it because they literally had no choice. For these people to be sitting there bitching about the price they had to pay to get Soria, they had no choice. If you're going to win this year, you, the prospects that are going to help you five, three, four years from now don't matter. You have to go out and pay the price that you needed to get a reliever because there's literally not another reliever in that bullpen besides Jabba. You know, and I'll, okay, I'll say Albuquerque. He's been effective for the most part. That, that can even come out and do anything because I mean Phil Coke comes out the game's over you know Ian Cole can't get out anyone as of late and the the merry-go-round of bullpen arms they've had this year so you can't complain at the price you paid and there was another really good point I read when's the last time really a, a prospect that Dave, Dave Dombrowski has dealt away that has really burned him in the ass I mean look at that Anibal Sanchez Omar Infante trade the deal you know Jacob Turner he was in the, the Marlins bullpen for a bit this year he hasn't been that good of a starter and Rob Brantley was a part of that and Brian Flynn and and those guys haven't done anything for the Marlins Rob Brantley you know he did good for a half a season, and then he's he wasn't even the, the catcher anymore. They got Saltalaki after that, and then you look at the um, Doug Fister trade. They stole Doug Fister. You know, uh, they gave away Francisco Martinez, Casper Wells, and Charlie Furbush. You know, Charlie Furbush is really the only one that is, is you know has been a mainstay because Wells is gone and Martinez ended up coming back to the Tigers for a little bit. But you know, those guys they got a lefty reliever, and we got two years of the 12th best pitcher in baseball, and he's doing all, absolutely awesome this year. And we got stolen from us, so. I mean, you can't. The prospects that Dombrowski has ever really dealt away really haven't come back to haunt him. I think the only one that even has that potential is maybe Avisayo Garcia, and that's only if uh, Iggy Iglesias stays hurt over the next few years. And, and, and Garcia, you know, continues to uh, improve because he was looking good with the White Sox over this year until he, I believe, hurt his shoulder in Colorado, is what it was, diving for a ball. So. You know, the price was steep, but you had to go out and pay it because you needed another arm. And I really, truly think that they have to go out and make one more trade before this deadline because they need another left-handed reliever. Their bullpen is going to be fine for right-handers. Jabba, Soria, Nathan, and Albuquerque are four arms that I think can get you by from the right side. And then, you know, you can get a right-handed mop-up arm in there somewhere. But you got to have a reliever that can get both lefties and righty out because – Bill Coke isn't the answer. And Ian Kroll just gets destroyed by righties. And he's getting destroyed by lefties as of late, too. You have to go out and get one more left-handed reliever. You have to. Someone that can get out both lefties and righties and get the job done, like a Drew Smiley of last year. And I think once that happens, your bullpen goes from well below average to about decent. It's not going to be amazing because you're still going to have uncertainties with Nathan knocking, locking down the ninth, even though you got Soria as a failsafe. But, you know, 
how much more is it really going to take after Nathan showed that kind of appearance last night to get him yanked out of that close as well? I mean, how many more appearances did that buy him now that he struck out the side and looked really good? You know, but you got Jabba, who's been absolutely locked down. You got Soria, who's absolutely outstanding. So you got three arms, four arms, including Alcock, that you know can get some outs now. But you still need that arm from the left-handed side that could come out and get some get some outs, both lefties and righties in key situations. You know, like a Drew Smiley of last year. You have to. So. Thoughts overall of the trade? Absolutely must must need. You had to do it. No choice, no matter how high the price was. If you're going to win the World Series, if you're going to overtake L.A., if you're going to overtake Oakland to try to win the American League, you had to go out and lock down somebody in the bullpen to get another arm in there because you keep having fucking disasters that had in Arizona the other night. You know, So you had to do it. They had the, they had the 26th worst bullpen ERA in baseball. I mean, you had to, no matter the price that was paid. I still think they have to go out there and get one more arm in a lefty reliever. You know, it's, this move not only benefits you this year because you want to be a World Series caliber club, but it benefits you next year because you get Soriano as well. Oh, sorry. Why do I keep calling Soriano? You get Soria for next year as well if you want to pick up his team option. That is pretty cost effective. So you get him for two years. So... Great move. He's an awesome fail safe because you can use him as a closer if Nathan continues to struggle. You know, you can slot him in the seventh, you can slot him in the eighth, you can slot him nice. He was a very versatile reliever that has been absolutely outstanding this year. He's actually got the lowest FIP in baseball. So the guy's been amazing. He's been the man. So solid, solid move by Dave Dombrowski. He saw a need. He needed to fill it. And I knew he wouldn't go this bullpen without wouldn't go this deadline without that bullpen move because I knew he had to do it. And I think that night, the other night in Arizona when they blew that game, it was the final straw. So Overall, great move. You had to pay a price, but you pay a price for quality. You get an outstanding arm in there for this year, maybe next year. Good start for next year's bullpen. And you got a nice fail safe to help back up Nathan. So need one more arm. Need a lefty reliever, but great move. And uh, I can't wait to see Soria pitch. So I got for you guys today. Have a good one.